Hello, and welcome to that video I've mentioned I was making a couple times. Yes, all the cut guns I was able to get my hands on shall be presented over the next few minutes. If they have descriptions, I'll read them. If they don't, I'll give my notes. Often both. These come from all different eras of the Gungeon. Release, Supply Drop, AG&D, and even a couple from the pre-alpha. There are so many I might have even missed some. I tried my very best, but I cannot say with 100% certainty that I did not miss a single one. There's also an old video by the YouTube channel Subscriber1236 that showcased a bunch of unused guns in a barely functional state. I'll be using clips of that video throughout my video as they relate to the weapons at hand, but I implore you to watch this video for yourself, it's fascinating. I'll put a link in the description. But without further ado... FLASH! Guns with Ammonomicon descriptions. L Tiger. Tooth and Claw. Fires Homing Teeth. Emmett Kelks was renowned for his hunting prowess and his creative gun craft. El Tiger's fangs seek prey relentlessly, with each bite more painful to the victim. This item references the lore character Emmett Kalks, who is infamously associated with animal-themed weaponry and dangerous hunting. Chrome Steel Assault Rifle Heavy Metal The Chrome Steel Assault Rifle was used as the last line of defense against a viscous Blobulonian incursion. Despite such a mighty weapon, greater numbers prevailed. I've heard some people say that the Chrome Steel Assault Rifle and the Hegemony Auto Rifle, shown later in the video, are the same gun, but I personally haven't been able to find any source for this other than assumption and rumor, so I'm fairly certain that it's not the case. Or at least not provably the case. Black Revolver The Black Revolver here is a bit weird because there are two different descriptions in the text dumps for two different weapons both called the Black Revolver. There are also two different sprites that I've put above. I'm not sure about the sprite on the left, but the sprite on the right has only been in the file since the AG&D update, meaning they may have developed it a bit more since then. Black Revolver, Six Deep. This revolver was once carried by the bearer of a terrible curse. The final shot in the chamber grants limited domination over enemy bullets. It is cold to the touch. A dark wind blows. And the other description? Black Revolver, Reap What You Sow. A portent of things to come. This revolver, once carried by the bearer of a terrible curse, remains cold to the touch. Similar, but different. Encircler. Round em up. A last resort of sustenance. A favorite of the resourceful rat. He doesn't typically favor any one gun in particular, as he usually collects only to grow his hoard, but he finds this one particularly appetizing. The Encircler is definitely related to the Resourceful Rat, but it's unclear whether it would have been special enough to be part of the Rat Transformation item group found in Rat Chests. The name, coupled with the quote of Round em Up, would definitely imply circular bullet patterns, or bullet patterns that would close around an enemy somehow, though I'm not sure what it means by Last Resort of Sustenance. Flamethrower. Burn, baby! The original model was merely a Mega Dowser filled with gasoline and a lighter taped to the nozzle. Since then, the Gungeon's acquisition department ordered an upgrade. The flamethrower weapon apparently dates back to the pre-alpha of Enter the Gungeon, and even makes an appearance in the Enter the Gungeon comic. Glass Cannon. Fragile, fatal. Powerful, but shatters upon taking damage. Normally a gun made of glass would shatter instantaneously, but the Gungeon's energies have reinforced this inadvisable device to the point of near usability. Obviously based on the common figure of speech of something being a glass cannon. Gundertail. Filled with determination. Doesn't shoot, slowly befriends your enemies. An antique revolver. It has no ammo. On days like these. This gun is an obvious reference to Undertale's empty gun, and even partially quotes one of Sansa's most popular lines from the genocide run. But there's even more attention to detail than that. The appearance and weird angle of the gun sprite itself is based on the Steam trading card art for the empty gun item, given that you never see an actual sprite for the weapon in Undertale. Hero Sword Enter the sword Jin, An elegant weapon, though perhaps obsolete. The brief description of this cut gun doesn't give us much to work with. It was almost definitely a sword, and was probably a reference to the Hero's Sword from Legend of Zelda, but outside that, there's pretty much nothing. This weapon may have been an early version of Blasphemy. 
Ice Ogre Head. Cold Shoulder. Freezes enemies. Ice Ogre Head still produces a bitterly cold breath, a favorite of the adventurer Freifel. As you can see in the old footage, the Ice Ogre Head was basically an ice version of the also cut Flamethrower. It may have been related in some way to the Frost Giant, since Ice Ogre and Frost Giant are suspiciously similar species names. JK47 Substitute Noodle shaped like a gun. Long, flat, gun shaped noodle. A staple of gun dead cuisine. Another pretty apparent pun on the AK-47, substituting AK for JK, an abbreviation for joking. Katana, Sword of Doom. Sword play is forbidden, and only the most powerful or most ignorant individuals can get away with using any melee weaponry. Angers the Jammed. I don't know who'd be dumb enough to use a katana in the gungeon. Real intellectual stick to baseball bats. Knight's Gun, Plowshare. Unloads firepower at foes. Digs. This trusty shovel was gifted to one of the first Gungeoneers by a traveling race of sentient yachts. A reference to the game Shovel Knight. The line about sentient yachts references the name of the development studio behind Shovel Knight, Yacht Club Games. M9. Non-non-lethal. This pistol is often modified to use tranquilizer rounds. This one has not been. The sprites of the M9 refer to it as the Beretta instead of the M9. The M9 isn't completely cut either, as it seems to be a weapon of choice for such enemies as the Cola, Beady, and even the Beholster itself. Megaphone. Vocal Opposition. This megaphone has been turned up to 11 and has the power to annoy even the hardiest gun dead. From the early footage, it looks like the megaphone functioned similarly to the Heck Blaster. But you've got to remember in this video, most guns are built off other guns and barely work, so it's barely evidence, really. Mjolnir, Hammer of the Gods, Charge to Ride the Lightning, can only be lifted by the most regretful of Gungeoneers. Now, the sprites of the Cobalt Hammer refer to it as Mjolnir, so it's entirely possible that the item was renamed and given a new description to reference something different. Portaler, Testing. Creates portals. While not intended for combat, crafty Gungeoneers have been known to use the portals it creates to end gunfights from relative safety. The Portaler is a clear reference to the signature tool of the Portal franchise and can be seen in the old footage, functionally, though very buggily, teleporting the player across space, as well as their projectiles. When it can be bothered, that is. Dodrill designer Dave Crooks mentioned the Portaler in an interview with Nintendo Everything. Here's that clip. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Uh, now, you said you had over like 200 guns in the game. Do you have any kind of ideas for guns that either didn't make it or couldn't make it into the game? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have probably another 50 half-built guns. Okay. Uh, namely, we just made the portal gun, uh, but it just really didn't work with the perspective. Okay. And it really wasn't that useful. Um, I actually did like redesign it near the end to hopefully make it more useful, but we never got around to implementing it. It's just a really labor-intensive one, so that was one of them. So it would seem that despite Dodge Roll's best efforts, the portal was doomed to remain unused. Sir Manuel's Revolver. Lost Soul. This revolver was brought to the Gungeon by a fearless adventurer whose true quest is still unknown. This gun can actually be seen in Sir Manuel's hand during his tutorial boss fight. The sprites of the gun call it the Tutorial Knight's Revolver, whereas the text dumps call it the Ghostly Sidearm. The line about his true quest remaining unknown, however, makes me suspicious. As far as I was aware, Manuel and Blockner merely looted dungeons together and came to the Gungeon after hearing of its legendary treasure, where the whole betrayal situation happened. It almost makes it seem like Manuel was supposed to have some weird ulterior motive to the whole thing. Strange. Super Space Turtle Gun. Hero from Space. This minuscule weapon was wielded by the famous Super Space Turtle, a hero from beyond the stars. It is difficult for a normal human hand to wield, but can still function as a normal gun. It is best used in the hands of the Super Space Turtle, wherever they may be. While it shares an exact description to the Super Space Turtle companion item, it's distinct in its nature as an actual tiny few pixels across gun that the player could actually hold and use. It was, however, merely relegated to acting as the firearm of the companion instead. Teapot. 
Monocular Monster. Ignites nearby enemies while reloading. Reloading this teapot heats up the contained water's H2O molecules. I've not got much to say about the teapot other than that if they didn't plan to make it synergize with the moustache, I'd be disappointed. The Fat Line. Technobabble. Fires projectiles from the target position towards the gun. Because tachyons are particles that move faster than light, the hegemony of man has long used them for interstellar communication. As with all technology, it was eventually weaponized. However, tachyons travel backward in time, making this gun hard to aim. This gun would apparently cause purple projectiles to emerge from the wall at which the gun was pointed. They would then travel back towards the barrel of the gun that summoned them. There was also a glitch where the fat line was able to appear in blessed runs despite being unobtainable normally. I'm not certain if this has been patched yet or not. The fat line used to be known by the game as the tachyon gun, with the quote of time traveler's gun. The text dumps still refer to the fat line as the tachyon gun. Third party controller. Assuming direct control. Allows for direct control of injured foes. Purchased as a reward for a child of the gungeon. Unfortunately, stupid mum didn't know what kind of controller to buy and got this dumb third party one. The controller was quickly discarded after one of the sticks became too wiggly. Child of the Gungeon is a name that a couple items used to refer to the co-op playable character the cultist by. This item also references the cultist's mother, a background lore character appearing in a couple other item descriptions, who seems simultaneously very caring and also very neglectful, considering she just leaves her child in the breach for long lengths of time. Triple Gun. Bullet the Stampede. Transforms between three forms based on its current ammo. Though it appears at first to be a gun like any other, this gun is in actuality a very rare plant. As you can see on the right, the triple gun's forms are Revolver, Machine Gun, and Weird. The triple gun is based on the weapon used by the character Vash in the anime Trigun. Similarly to the fat line, there was a glitch with the triple gun that would allow it to appear in blessed runs despite being cut. Again, I'm unsure if this has been patched. Wrist Bow. Handy! A rudimentary wooden hand crossbow used commonly by skullets in the hollow. Like its description states, the wrist bow can be seen held by skullets and skullmits in the hollow. Old footage shows the wrist bow in use, behaving like a rapid fire crossbow in an unsurprisingly similar fashion to skullets' attacks. Tetrominator. Line piece! The Tetrominator shoots every possible configuration of four bullets. Strangely, the line configuration seems rarer than others. In old footage, you can see the Tetrominator firing yellow one-piece blocks that burst into four smaller blocks that travel in the cardinal directions. However, Dave Crooks also mentioned the Tetrominator in that Nintendo Everything interview, where he describes its abilities rather differently. Really labor-intensive one, so that was one of them. We had this other idea for a Tetris gun that shot blocks and then they would stick together in the air and then like if you got them all they yeah, would like delete the enemy uh but that also didn't make it okay uh, just, sometimes they were just it was like too much specific code work yeah, for like yeah. one thing but yeah. like for what yeah, depending yeah. on scope you know yeah. you gotta put it all into, into exactly. equations a whole configuration of different bullets that could line up in the air and delete enemies should a full line be formed ultimately leading to the gun being cut due to the amount of coding that will be necessary to make the gun a reality now we move on to the guns that exist only as sprites, with no proper description. For these, we can largely only speculate on how they would have functioned. Caster. Looking like a mix of the Witch Pistol and the Bundle of Wands, the Caster may have been an early version of the Witch Pistol, but we'll never really know. Ice Gun. The text stumps refer to the gun actually in the game known as the Glacier as the Ice Gun, so this Ice Gun may be a precursor to the modern Glacier. Real Cool Bow. I have no idea. A blue bow with a light blue string and yellow arrows represented by a super simplistic one pixel thick sprite in some places that is apparently real cool. Right. Circler. This gun sprite is either the sprite for the unused in circler gun I've already discussed, or was a gun in its own right. Looking at its sprite, I almost think it would have behaved like the Tangler, except making enemies circular. Jail NPC Shotgun 
This gun would presumably be obtained from, used by, or associated with an NPC in a jail cell. Whether or not this refers to one NPC in particular, or related to the NPC jail mechanic in general, is unknown. Evo Gun The strange, blue-tinted Evo Gun, almost definitely standing for Evolution Gun, has six different forms that it would presumably evolve through when certain conditions were met over the course of a run. These forms are as follows. Amoeba form? Sponge form? Worm form, maybe? I think that's a worm. Snail slash ammonite form, fish slash miscellaneous creature form, and finally, dinosaur form. Though you could make an argument for this form being a dragon given the curved horns and wings. In fact, it looks more like a dragon than a dinosaur, but I'm going to call it dinosaur form because it fits nicely. Excalibur. Probably Dodge Roll's original attempt to make a gun based around the Excalibur pun. It would almost definitely function differently to the gun we have today. Predator. A gun that seems to be in reference to the shoulder-mounted plasma casters in the Predator franchise. Gunda Fury. Similarly to the Evo gun, the Gunda Fury sprites imply that it would have leveled up over the course of a run through certain conditions, most likely use in combat. The sprites for the Gunda Fury look like they would have changed every 10 levels, based on the sprite names as well, of course. This implies that leveling up for the Gunda Fury would be more common than other leveling guns, with the proper upgrades not being received every level, but every 10. There are no sprites for levels after 60, so you can see the gun's six forms here. Lightning Bolt. A chargeable gun based on the concept of flinging lightning bolts from one's hands like Zeus. You can see both the charged and uncharged sprites. Wixus. This probably cursed axe handgun has been stated by the developers to be in reference to the novel The Lies of Locke Lamora. The devs have also said that if the Wixus is ever implemented that it will likely be named The Wicked Sixter. In the old footage that I keep referencing and will continue to reference no matter how many times I have to boringly refer to it as the old footage, the sprites for the Wixus can be seen on an unfinished gun using the framework of the Huntsman. Loot. The more traditional looking loot seems to have been a relation of the face melter. You can see it in the old footage firing in a cross pattern like the face melter, but at a much slower rate. The sprite for the loot was not completely abandoned, however, as you can see it in the ending screen of the bullet's past being played by a cooler. Void Core Rocket Launcher There's not much to say here other than that this weapon is another one to add to the set of weapons belonging to the former military group known as the Void Core. Crunch Gun A metallic dragon maw shaped weapon with sprites for opening itself up and biting down. It also has glowing red sprites for some sort of mad form, probably triggered somehow to aid the player. Hot Dog Gun It's... a uh, hot dog. Hegemony Auto Rifle I've mentioned this gun earlier, but the Hegemony Auto Rifle is a red rifle that I don't actually think was ever supposed to be used by a player. They're wielded exclusively by the Black Starship's hegemony goons in the Convict's past, firing bursts of three bullets. Wind Gunner Nothing is really known about the Wind Gunner other than that it would be the gun that the unused Sprun item would transform into under certain circumstances. This will make more sense when I inevitably make a cut items video. Okay, so I have a minor segment to put in here surrounding four weird themed guns. These being alternate, much more glamorous versions of the starter guns used by the main cast of Gungeoneers. Robot Skull Hand a reskin of the robot's right hand, possibly for use with its alt skin given its name and color scheme. Rogue Special. No name change whatsoever here, yeah. Looks quite golden, although knowing the pilot, probably not solid gold. SPMA 2. A clean version of the marine sidearm with much brighter colors. It should be noted that the regular marine sidearm is called the SPMA in the file, so SPMA 2 is basically just the dev's way of saying, yes, this is an alt. Unrusty Revolver A clean, silvery revolver with a ruby-looking chamber and a notably different sprite name to the weapon it's based off, namely the Rusty Sidearm. Moon Crown Probably worn on the player's head like Crown of Guns, the Moon Crown is a reference to the tiara worn by the character of Sailor Moon in the anime of the same name. 
Paint Gun. A colorful paint shooter in reference to the guns used by the characters in Splatoon. Budget Ray Gun. Possibly another alt sidearm in the same vein as the unrusty revolver, but I wasn't 100% sure, so I put it here. Another interesting collection of guns, these two. The starter weapons of the unused characters Gunslinger and Lamy. Lamy's gun can be seen in her boss card, so no surprises there. I only noticed this while writing the script for this video, but remember the black revolver's new sprite from earlier? Wouldn't you say that these two look very... very similar? Regardless, the Gunslinger gun looks ornate and definitely gives off the vibe of an antique, whereas the Lamy gun is functional looking and blocky. Slightly futuristic, but not insanely flashy or sci-fi. Missile Launcher The Missile Launcher is a cut gun from quite early in the development of Enter the Gungeon that was presumably cut and replaced by the RPG. You can even see it briefly in a GIF posted to the Dodge Roll Games Twitter announcing that the gun cap had been removed. I'm recording this after the rest of the video, but that GIF of the old gun cap being removed actually has a lot of fascinating stuff in it. Uh, for example, old designs for the face melter, Rubidine Mark II, Marine Sidearm, Budget Revolver, Bundle of Wands, Mac 10, Makarov, VC Assault Rifle, Rusty Sidearm, Hegemony Rifle, Shock Rifle, as well as the aforementioned Ice Gun, Excalibur, and the Missile Launcher that started this segment, and even these three guns that I can't even place. Point is, there's a lot in that gif, and I'm glad that I put in the time to add this section in later, because it's interesting in its own right. MSG Trank and MSG Trank WP. This might have something to do with Metal Gear Solid. I don't know what else MSG could stand for, but my research turned to blank, so I'm not super confident in that. There's also this blue and black simplified version with the letters WP after the name. I don't know what WP stands for in this context. Nerf Worm. A fat pink worm that fired pink worm darts. Just weird. Glaive. The glaive would probably be right on the verge of holiness and unholiness in the gungeon as a spinning and thrown blade. You can see the sprites here for the glaive spinning through the air. Tank Barrel. The barrel of the treadnought in gun form for a player's use. As you can see in the old footage, the gun would charge up and fire the Treadnought's explosive shells. It looks very unwieldy to use due to the length of the barrel, and nigh impossible to use in small rooms. The name Tank Barrel is just my working name for it, as the name in the video is broken, and its sprites call it the Tank Treader Barrel. Uppercase R Obviously a variant of the lowercase r, the uppercase r would be held on its side, seemingly in an attempt to make it look more gun-like. Sprites for explosions that it would apparently create have also been provided. Big Gun A revolver variant of the big shotgun actually added in AG and D. Let's take another look at guns from the game's pre-alpha with Lieutenant Green's rifle and Lieutenant Red's shotgun. These guns would be obtained from a specific group of NPCs in the game's pre-alpha known as the Colossant Soldiers. They ask you to pick a new commander who then goes on to take the old commander's weapon and gives you theirs. The rifle would be obtained if Lieutenant Green was picked, and the shotgun if Red was. Chamber Guns There is an unused gun in Enter the Gungeon for almost every chamber in the game. These guns represent the chamber and continue its theme. I haven't put them in any particular order here, so I hope that doesn't ruin it. Castle Gun Since the game's files and sprites refer to the Keep of the Lead Lord as the Castle, it would make sense for the Castle Gun to represent the first chamber. I managed to find the projectiles that the gun would shoot, and strangely, they seem to be golden rings. Next up is the hollow gun, looking like a sleek metal rocket launcher coated in unwieldy chunks of ice, with one of said chunks being formed into a skull. There are two projectiles for the hollow gun, this ice cube with god knows what sticking out of it, and a small greenish blue missile. Moving on to the Gungeon Gun, a very generic name until you realize that similarly to the Castle Gun, the game seems to prefer referring to the Gungeon proper as just the Gungeon, despite the whole structure technically being the Gungeon. The gun itself looks like it's trying to mimic the brick style of the Gungeon proper, but other than that, the design too is pretty generic. I only found the projectile sprites while writing the script for this video, so I was also reminded to not only show you its generic projectile, but also show you this sprite from its reload animation showing the two parts of the gun snapping open. 
This animation is called the final reload for some reason instead of just the reload. Mine gun. A handheld drill gun representing the third chamber. Its projectiles are lasery and elongated and not particularly remarkable. Finally for the main chambers, the forge gun resembling a trough of molten metal is also a beam weapon. This beam may have been more of a stream of molten metal given the position of the trough, but I'm not sure. Five main chambers down, but that's not the end. Oubliette gun. A chunky looking gun perfectly matching the style of the oubliette. The oubliette gun would fire green skulls. I think it's a fair bet that it would have something to do with poison, but there's not really any confirmation. And the abbey gun, which looks to be more of a beefy crossbow firing silvery metal bolts. The only real chambers that aren't represented by a gun would be the Resourceful Rat's Lair, Bullet Hell, and I suppose the Halls of Knowledge, if you count them as a chamber, that is. Hey, you remember Cthulhuba? That weird sprite naming thing that I thought referenced a proper character, but in the end concluded was it's an early dev name for Caliber? Yeah, well it keeps on getting more complicated! Introducing the 50 Cthulhuba Pistol, a gun that clearly references Cthulhuba and was added AFTER AGND! Meaning that the idea that Cthulhuba was an early dev name is now up for debate once again since they're apparently still using it on new, though admittedly unused, content. The gun's projectiles are known by their sprites as Cthulhuba maggots, and it looks like they would have wiggled their way through the air to enemies. There are also these sprites of a Cthulhuba maggot curled up into a ball and slowly rotating entitled Cthulhuba Soul. Where the Cthulhuba maggots are fairly self-explanatory, I have no idea about the Cthulhuba Soul. But yeah! That's a pretty big revelation about the ever-evolving Cthulhuba mystery. Anyways! Finally for this video, I have a few early development designs for guns actually in the game. This is probably not complete, but it's pretty interesting nonetheless. There's a more gun-like bubble blaster, a shorter and stubbier blasphemy, a crappier looking unicorn horn and skull spitter, and two old designs for the hegemony rifle. So yeah! This has been my attempt to cover all the guns created for Enter the Gungeon but never fully realized, either because of technical limitations, limited dev time, or just a developer deciding the game was better without it. I hope you found them interesting, and I hope that some of them, like the Cthulhu one, spark a bit of debate. But anyways, I've got to go find an emu oil salesman to cure my lumbago. See ya! Well, there's also this file entitled Gishbid Fire 001 as was part of a gun's firing animation, but the actual file itself is only a few pixels across and is completely transparent. There are other files labeled with Gishbid, such as Gishbid Idle 1 and Gishbid Intro 1, all of which are in the same boat of not really being anything. Probably a weird technical thing, but I thought it was worth mentioning.